lens probably because it's raining. I'm just on my way home from testing out the Ducati uh, Desert X, which was awesome. some asshole who wants to f***ing get around the bikers. So while I'm on my way home from testing the Ducati Desert X, I thought I would make a little video on some of the issues I had, well not issues, but like, you know, things that I didn't really like about my Toyota V4 factory, it's a 2022 model, um, and I wanted to talk about some of the things that I didn't like and how I went about fixing them. Got no baffle in here. Just some of the things that I was already expecting when buying the bike and how I went about fixing them. So um, the main ones were down low, everybody talks about how it was, you know, quite choppy, like on and off kind of throttle, um, which was not ideal for, you know, like just everyday driving. Um, and the way that, it, you know, I definitely had that, it was definitely quite, you know, down low on the revs, it was quite choppy, um, just real snatchy kind of throttle. Um, in touring mode it was better than in sport mode, but, um, you know, it was still there. Uh, the way I went around that was the way everybody pretty much goes around it was by having it tuned. So um, I put the Acropovic titanium slash carbon fiber slip on with the DCAT. And I got the Gabbro Racing tune with the up map. And that completely smoothed out the bike. It's, um, it was a complete difference. Uh, it doesn't... It had, I definitely noticed like a little bit more power, but not heaps, but it's just real smooth now, uh, which I love, so I'm real stoked about that. And that pretty much solved that problem in a lot, it's not even an issue anymore, so. And the other thing I did was, um, I went from 42 teeth on the rear sprocket to 44 teeth, and I converted it to a 520 chain. And, you know, when you pair that modification with the tune and the exhaust, it definitely feels like a faster bike. Um, obviously I'm losing a very slight amount of top speed, you know, I mean, I don't know how it does it. I, I've not witnessed this, obviously, because I only abide by the laws uh, of New Zealand road code, but it still does over 250k an hour, so, I mean, how fast do you want to go on the road? It definitely feels like it has quite a bit more acceleration um, with the lightweight chain and the lightweight sprocket and the tune and the exhaust. Um, oh, I also had the K&N performance air filter in. It's just, I really don't have any other issues with the bike now. All, all those teething issues I had were are gone. Now I notice in like slower corners where I would have gone down to first and been like, because second was like slightly too low. Um, now I can just stay in second and because I don't have that jerky throttle, it's really good for like really tight twisties as well now, which is nice. This thing is just an animal. Uh, it's way, way too much for the street. But yeah, I just wanted to quickly talk about that. If, you're, if you've got a Tuono, any era, I definitely recommend the um, going up two teeth on the back. I don't think I would go, a lot of people have gone up two teeth on the back and gone down one on the front. I think that would be too much. I mean, that's just my opinion, but you know, I'm doing the occasional track day and mostly riding on the street with this bike and uh, you know two teeth up on the front is perfect. So yeah if you're thinking about the 520 conversion um, definitely do it. I love it. I'm really happy with that I did it. Um, it doesn't like chug down low anymore like I mean it still does it a little bit but when you're taking off with the lights before I did the conversion um, in first gear it was just a little bit chuggy and it, it's definitely not 100% gotten rid of that, but mostly, uh, which is nice. Man, this thing just has power endlessly. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Just a short video on the 520 chain conversion. Um, I did it myself, really, really easy to do. See you guys in the next video. Cheers.